Greetings and welcome to today's video in which we will recone this thoroughly destroyed old Jensen uh, P10R speaker. Step one will be to remove the original cone and gasketing from the perimeter of the speaker basket. My favorite tool for this procedure is a broad chisel tip exacto blade like this and I always try to remove the gasketing intact because sometimes you'll encounter a perfectly good speaker that might be missing some gasketing so this will help you in that case okay and be sure that you scrape all around the perimeter so that it is shiny and clean because this is the surface that your new cone is going to be installed against and it has to be flat Next we're going to remove the braided wire and the spider down here and clean that surface very well too. Now it's time to thoroughly clean the inside of the basket and blow with compressed air down here through this gap between the pole piece uh, and the magnet so that you have no dirt or any residue in there to make your voice coil scratchy. Also it's time to clean up and wax the outside of the speaker at this time if you're going to paint it. Uh, this is the ideal time to do it because you don't have to worry about masking off your cone uh, inside here. Uh, so you just go ahead and paint it. In this case, the paint's perfect on this old Jensen. I'm just going to clean it and car wax it, taking care not to disturb uh, the original labels or numbers around the perimeter. Okay, now that it's blown out nice and clean, I'm going to take a piece of cardstock like this and cut about a half inch wide strip to use as a shim to go down inside here and clean that gap. Okay, insert the shim as deep as you can in that gap and move around the pole piece breaking loose any material that might be stuck in the gap. Then we're going to blow it out again with the air hose and repeat this procedure. Now after using several different shims and uh, several sessions with the air compressor. Uh, look down with a bright light and make sure there is absolutely no a residue, a little tiny metal flakes or anything like that uh, down inside this gap. It has to be almost surgically uh, clean. Now if you haven't already ordered your reconing supplies, if you look there will be numbers on the voice coil 28Y32 and a number on the uh, cone itself 4943W1 that can help you find exactly the right materials that you need to recone your speaker. If you've ordered a kit, then check the diameter, thickness, and length of your voice coil and compare it uh, to the old one that you've removed. And then one final little trick is to wrap some masking tape around your shim with the sticky side out and then stick it down into the space and go all the way around and the sticky masking tape is going to catch whatever little particles are left in there after your uh, preliminary cleaning. You can see all the little particles of dirt and metal that were still lurking down here in the space between the pole piece and the speaker basket. Hey Rusty. Rusty, are you ready to get to work on this video? Huh? You all fired up, I can tell. Look at that tail wag. Oh my lord. Okay, let's get started. Okay, now we have absolutely thoroughly cleaned the gap between the pole piece and the speaker basket. Before we get started, there's a couple of preliminary steps that will really help you later. First, check the clearance of the inner diameter of the hole in the spider to make sure that it is slightly larger than the voice coil outer diameter. You want just a slight gap all the way around uh, so that the spider is not in contact with the voice coil anywhere. I find a Dremel tool with a sanding drum like this on it is a really good way to open up that interior diameter if you have to. Be very very careful though because this will take off the material quite rapidly. Next do the same thing with the speaker cone making sure that there is a tiny little air gap between it and the voice coil. Next up we're going to take our new voice coil and notice it has an 8 uh, so we know it's 8 ohm. You can also double check it with your ohm meter. It should be around what 6.3 ohms 
of DC resistance. Next we clean the inside and outside surfaces of the voice coil and then check the clearance on the pole piece. It should slide down easily. Next we need to measure the depth of the cavity around the uh, pole piece so it'll slide a shim all the way to the bottom and then draw a little line. That is our overall depth. Next we'll compare the depth of the cavity with the width of the windings on the voice coil. We want to have at least one voice coil width of downward travel before the bottom of the voice coil hits the bottom of the cavity. So it appears that if I position the voice coil right here with the top winding of the coil barely visible above the pole piece, I will have that width of excursion downward. We don't want this to ever strike the bottom of the chamber and we also don't want it to ever come out far enough that it can come past the pole piece and get tilted a little bit and get stuck. So it looks like about two windings or so of the voice coil will have to be visible above the pole piece. Next I'm going to make a shim that's going to space the voice coil an even distance all the way around the pole piece. In uh, the case of this particular speaker, two layers of typewriter paper is going to work. So this is going to wrap around twice. For bigger gaps you'd have to use thicker material. Now roll up your shim one ply if you use thicker material, or two plies in my case, and be sure that the wires that exit from the voice coil align themselves here with the terminals of the speaker, and then put the end of your shim over the pole piece, slide the shim all the way to the bottom of that cavity, and then we're going to slide our voice coil downward around it until about two of the windings of the coil are uh, visible above this edge right here of the speaker basket. Okay, now we've got our little hair-like wires aligned with the terminals of the speaker basket and we've got just a tiny bit of the voice coil visible above the edge of this plate. Now there's all sorts of exotic glues you can use uh, for this next step, I just use Wellwood contact cement and a regular paintbrush. And we're going to apply a medium coat right around this perimeter to hold down our spider edge. Now I have a layer of contact cement around the perimeter of uh, the plate. And I put a little bit on the foot that's around the outside of the uh, spider. Now we set the spider down into the contact cement. You can see a little bit of our voice coils protruding upward. Uh, we have the two little hair-like wires aligned with our terminals on our speaker basket. And we have a nice, thin, uniform gap between the spider and the voice coil form. Next, we squeeze out a couple equal lines of 5-minute epoxy and mix it up. Then, using a sharpened dowel, I carefully apply the epoxy all the way around that gap between the voice coil and the spider. Um, being very careful not to get any on the shim because we don't want to glue it to the voice coil or to let it uh, not let it run down the sides of the voice coil and glue it to the speaker basket. Now let's give this about five or ten minutes to harden. Next, we drop our speaker cone in place to check the fit, and we see that it rides a little high here. It's about a, oh, what, sixteenth of an inch above the speaker basket. That means I'm going to have to remove some material from the bottom of the cone so it can sit a little bit deeper, and this edge can just lay flush against the speaker basket. Okay, now with that small amount removed from the bottom of the cone, you see that it lays flush all the way around the perimeter and does not push down at all on the voice coil and spider. I will add that generally the cones fit in perfectly, but since they didn't have exactly the right cone in stock for this speaker, I got one that was a tenth of an inch too deep, so I just had to remove that tenth of an inch to make it work. 
Okay, if we can't get Jack to retrieve his paper toy, maybe he'll go for this tasty treat. Ready, Jack? Oh yeah, he seems a little more enthusiastic when there's something to eat. Good boy. Now before we complete the installation of the cone and the speaker basket, we're going to have to install the flexible braided uh, cables that connect the voice coil to the input terminals of the speaker. Now some speakers come with little eyelets in the cone to facilitate this, but this one didn't. So we're going to have to make some tiny little holes here for our uh, wires to pass through. And I think rather than a machete or a pickaxe, the best approach is to heat up uh, an awl or some sharpened implement like this and just lightly burn your way through the cone without charring it, but you get two really nice, neat, clean holes. Then cut off some two or three inch pieces of your flexible cable, push it through the little holes that you made in the cone, and I add just a dot of epoxy to hold these in place. Uh, until I'm finished soldering them. They should protrude inside, I'll say a sixteenth or three thirty seconds of an inch. Like this. Okay, now it's time to apply our contact cement to the outer perimeter of the speaker basket. Okay, now we have a medium uh, layer of contact cement on our speaker basket and a light coat on the rear of the speaker cone. Then we're going to drop the cone in place, making sure that our uh, flexible wires line up with the two uh, terminals on the speaker basket. Making sure that we have a nice even space between the voice coil and the speaker cone. Now it's time to install the gaskets, so we will put a layer of contact cement on the back of the, each of the four gasket pieces and another layer here around the perimeter of the cone. Then after each of the four gasket pieces is put in place around the perimeter of the cone, uh, we use some high-tech wooden clothespins to hold it in place until the contact cement can set up. Okay, so here we are with the gasket clamped down in place, uh, letting the contact cement set up. And now uh, we're going to apply epoxy around this gap between the voice coil and the speaker cone. There you can see a nice uniform uh, layer of epoxy connecting the voice coil and the speaker basket. All the way around, no bubbles and no open places. Now that the glue is set up, we'll take one of those little hair thin uh, wires from the voice coil, bring it up here and wind it around that stub of flexible cable. Do the same over here. Then with a sharp pointed uh, soldering iron, very carefully solder those connections between the voice coil wires and the flexible cables. Don't burn a gaping hole in your speaker cone. All it takes is just a small amount of solder to solidify the joint. Now mix up a little more epoxy and coat the tiny little wires uh, all the way out to where they wrap around uh, the flexible cables and completely solidify everything with a layer of epoxy. Be very neat because this is generally visible. Okay, we waited about an hour or so for the epoxy to harden. I'm going to leave the clothespins on the contact cement probably overnight. Uh, now if we haven't uh, epoxied our shim to our voice coil, you can kind of pull it in here and see if it's loose. We can remove the, the shim now, lift it straight up, hopefully it'll lift right out, and now we have our recon speaker. We're going to put a dust cover now in place over this. To keep birds and thrown underwear at live performances and other things like that from getting down in that gap between our voice coil and pole piece. Now it's time to install the center cap. I had an old antique style one here with a little kind of air cleaner in the middle. I cut a couple little notches to coincide with those wires so that this could lay flat on the cone. And I'm going to secure it with some of that tight bond two uh, wood glue. Before I do, let's get one last look here at the joints between the 
uh, speaker cone and voice coil. Okay, uh, hopefully yours will look just like this or better. I made a little masking tape handle. It makes it a lot easier to manage uh, the dust cover while you're applying the glue and installing it in the cone. There, get it centered as well as you can. And then I'm going to put some fairly heavy washers on it to hold it down and press it against the cone while that glue sets up. Then to play it safe, I put a little bead of Elmer's glue around the perimeter of the dust cap. It's going to shrink when it dries and turn clear and become almost invisible, but it gives a really nice dust seal. And there, as promised, is the fully sealed dust cap. Another nice touch is to paint the bright silver uh, soldering uh, flat black so that it doesn't shine through uh, speaker grill cloth. This final step's a little tough to show, but you take each of those braided flexible cables and run them through the centers of the uh, input lugs on the speaker basket. Give yourself plenty of slack inside here so that nothing restricts the movement of the uh, speaker cone. Then solder each of them to the lug and then cut off the protruding piece of cable. Well, here's the finished product, a Jensen Alnico 5 speaker from 1957 with all the original markings around the perimeter, including a GF date stamp that exactly matches the stamp on the tube chart. Just to refresh your memory, here is the original cone and voice coil that were in the speaker when I got it. And here is the finished product. Good stiff cone, suitable for guitar use, new gaskets, dust cover, looks just like new. Okay, I've gone to great expense on this test. A genuine Blue Bunny gallon ice cream uh, tub with the speaker uh, and its new cone laying in the top, so we'll get a little bit of resonance. We got the Newcomb Pathfinder all fired up to send the output power to the speaker and I've got a guitar plugged in so let's see how it sounds but you know darn well this isn't a legitimate tone test it's just to see if the speaker does function and can put out some volume without just disintegrating okay let's see how it sounds It's got that nice small cabinet boxy sound, uh, but I have to say it sounds pretty darn good. Uh, nice and clear, and it didn't seem to fall apart. Let's try one more time. Let's give it one more try to self-destruct. I'll be honest with you, I think this thing sounds better in an ice cream tub than a lot of amps that I've heard. And I will also say that uh, reconing speakers isn't for everybody. It's a very kind of technically demanding, fussy job. But I think you can agree that turning this into this uh, can really give you a feeling of accomplishment. I'll put a link in the video description telling where I got the parts. So if you want to do any of your own reconing, you'll be able to get the supplies to do it. Well, that's about it for this instructional video. Uh, Rusty, Jack, and I really appreciate the time you spent watching. And we hope to see you again in the very near future. Bye for now. And now I'm standing way above the railroad tracks on top of those cliffs that you have seen in the background on some of my previous videos. Next, let's climb up on top of that high hill in the distance. Now from this high vantage point, we can get a real panoramic view of the Rio Grande Valley that lies below us. That's where we were standing just a few minutes ago.
Well, here's an unusual sight out in the desert. Water welling up through the ground. And then just downhill, a beautiful daisy bush. Probably here because of that water. And the water winds its way down the road and forms a little mini arroyo here, taking fresh water out into the desert. Winding its way further and further downhill, creating its own ecosystem along the way. Here's an interesting structure uh, out to the side of the railroad right-of-way. I believe they use these as giant conduit boxes. Um, anyway, I know darn well that I'm not going to be spending the night in this thing. Interestingly, there appears to be a shelf unit here. Must, this thing must be laying on its side. And look over there, there's an old electrical insulator. You can see all of the ballast from the old rail bed. Here's an interesting discovery. Possibly an old piece of railroad china that was discarded. It says Rock Island. Now here we can see a rather unusual beautification project, I guess, by the railroad. They planted these oleander bushes all along the side of the tracks through this stretch. Now, they're providing water for all of these plants, but I'm not really sure what the motivation is since it's mostly freight trains through this area.